today's topic is finance. So let us move on to a uh, veteran person in this uh, field. Uh, he does not talk much, but I am very happy that he is available today for, uh, you know, to talk to us. Uh, before, uh, he is the managing director of uh, Sun Group, Mr. Pankaj Segal. And uh, I would like to flag one thing before, uh, for, for other uh, panel discussion, other speakers, even later on, is that my postulate is that funds are available. There is no dearth of funds. There is a dearth of projects. So for a good project, funds are available. Of course, it depends on the terms that uh, Tanya discussed in detail, and uh, which also should be debated. So uh, with uh, that background, uh, let us uh, hear uh, Sun Group, uh, very well-known uh, group. And uh, he has been uh, in our uh, Indian uh, side also, uh, uh, you know, in a big way. And in Charanka, the solar park, they are our neighbors, uh, Kiran Energy and Sun. So that also is, uh, and here also is my neighbor. So, <laughs> so Pankaji uh, will be very happy to listen to your insights uh, into this man. Good morning, all. Um, and thank you, Mr. Mehta, for that very kind uh, introduction. Uh, I've had the privilege of benefiting from Mr. Mehta's wisdom. If you're not smart yourself, you should find a mentor who's smart. And so my <laughs> mantra has been that. In school, I used to find someone who was sitting next to and I could cheat off his exam and manage to get decent grades. And in professional life, uh, managed to cheat off bright people. Tanya's colleague, James, is a good friend of mine as well, and, and, and so on. But anyway, uh, very good morning to you. Uh, you know, we have far too many uh, these kind of events these days. When solar started in 2008 or 9, I think there was probably one event a year. And now we have it virtually every week. Must really commend uh, Anand and his team's efforts. So I purposely didn't want to go through a presentation. A lot of these things uh, get repeated in a two day conference. So I'll limit my comments to two aspects one on ground mount, one on distributed, and leave some time for interaction. I think there is a huge amount of uh, knowledge and expertise in the room. And we have the benefit of Mr. Mehta in the room as well, who uh, not only nationally but internationally uh, is uh, very well involved. And so it will be a good idea to interact as opposed to uh, me spewing off some gyan of, uh, of a presentation. Uh, just as a way of background, uh, as Mr. Mehta said, uh, Sun Group is about 110 year old uh, conglomerate uh, in a whole variety of different businesses. Uh, and uh, besides being one of the managing directors of the group, I also am privileged to be the CEO of a joint venture which we have recently done about a year ago with a company called Oryx, which is the largest solar uh, player in Japan, much larger than SoftBank. Uh, and our focus in that joint venture is on distributed solar. Uh, so, uh, before I get into the couple of points, I would like to actually echo what uh, Anand was saying at the, uh, at the opening remarks. Uh, I think uh, one aspect which has gravitated me to renewables, especially solar, would underscore the point he was making uh, about energy independence and the socio-economic transformation uh, this can bring about. Uh, I recall, I think six, seven years ago when solar was just starting, I saw a video uh, that IFC had put together. IFC being a developmental organization, uh, it doesn't really hit home. You're always thinking of profits and megawatts and gigawatts and all that. But the true power of solar, in my view, um, is the distributed aspect. You can bring, there's no other technology to my mind, maybe biomass to some extent, where you can generate power close to where it's consumed, and you can leapfrog just like we have on the mobile uh, telephony side, leapfrog the grid and take 
the energy access uh, in India about 270 million people, but worldwide 2 billion people, and how it impacts their life, uh, their health, uh, I think is uh, quite poignant, at least for me. Uh, so energy independence is extremely uh, uh, critical. Uh, India, as you know, we import 90% of our diesel, 80% petrol, 40% coal, uh, and huge amount of foreign exchange. Uh, so if uh, that we become self-reliant, uh, I think it will have far-reaching uh, impact, whether it's inflation and with inflation, you know, uh, affordability uh, and affects every aspect of, of the society. So with that out of the way, uh, as far as uh, the two points I wanted to highlight, uh, I thought just to provoke a discussion perhaps after Mr. Kapoor has spoken. On the large ground mount side, if you look at the total power equation of the country, 330 gigawatts, 195 in coal, 14 or so in solar, 30 some in wind and so on. Uh, out of the 195 gigawatts of coal, uh, 20 gigawatts in, at any particular point are not in operation because they're down for maintenance. Another 45 gigawatts are installed but are not operating because of either coal linkages issues or lack of PPA. And so if you take that out of 330 gigawatts and also take out wind, which is not operating, uh, and then factor for the 27, 28 percent ATC losses, what you get is about 185 gigawatts. And that's pretty much what the government claims is the current demand. Uh, and hence the claim of CEA that we pretty much are power sulfurous. If that's the case, and if our power consumption is increasing at 6 percent, which is current rate, and the government obviously is going to be focused on improving the coal linkages issues and getting the coal plants, which are actually the most, the irony is those are the most efficient plants, super critical, critical, most recent ones. Get them online. That would beg a question of what kind of real growth one can expect on the large utility scale solar going forward. Uh, I think we saw a little bit of that uh, this year. After two, three years of rapid growth, we saw the growth come down to under four gigawatts this year. And then there are other issues as well in terms of land acquisition, transmission capacity, substation capacity, and just you know the, the, the latent demand of most of the states has been satiated uh, over the last three, four years. So perhaps there are two, three states, maybe Chhattisgarh, maybe UP. So that's one aspect on the large ground mount uh, solar, uh, where it will be interesting to debate uh, how do you continue to create the momentum. One thing which I think has been pivotal, without which we would not have accomplished 29, 30 gigawatts. There's 13, 14, which is installed in another, about uh, 18, 19, which is in development, is the whole concept of solar parks. Uh, because the most difficult thing in India, actually, more than any of these things that we talked about, is land acquisition. Um, and so I think that was really the key uh, facilitator that enabled us to reach 30 gigawatts, which is a Herculean task. Uh, as uh, Mataji said, uh, in 2009, I had the privilege to be an advisor to the Prime Minister Sham Saran's office at the time. And even 20 gigawatts seemed very uh, difficult. And the only way it has happened is because of solar parks. And so most of the developers have to really focus on developing projects, not on the other infrastructure issues. So that's the issue on the large ground mount side. How do we continue to incent growth? Uh, second issue is on the DG side. DG for me is anything which is small ground mount uh, or rooftop. Uh, Mataji may not remember, but we had the same conference EQ in Bombay, uh, I think 18 months ago, where I had kind of hinted that maybe rooftop might be a higher growth uh, segment in about a couple of years. Uh, now, one of the issue on the rooftop side is how do you 
and sent the utilities because the bigger growth or bigger scale opportunity is really on the CNI side, commercial and industrial side, which are large rooftops. And by solarizing them, you are of course uh, hitting in the revenue source of utilities, which everyone understands, you know, the most paying customers are the commercial, industrial, then residential. And so on one hand, the government through the ODE program has focused on, uh, you know, getting balance sheets of a lot of these uh, utilities in order, which is effectively transferring their, uh, their debt and, and negative balance to the state uh, balance sheet. But unless you give them sustainable, uh, profitable customers, on one hand, if you start robbing them, then again, you know, in four to five years, they will be where they are. Uh, today. And so I think that's a critical question. I don't know. I would love to get Mr. Mehta's perspective. Uh, short term, yes, you can have three, four, five, six, ten gigawatts of growth in rooftop. But, and, it, and by the way, one thing which probably may not be that obvious, uh, worth stating, when we talk about solar reaching grid parity on the large ground mount on the wholesale side, it still hasn't. As Methodi said, probably it's three rupees and coal is still 2.3, although we may not be fully factoring for the, for the, for the subsidies that you get on coal. Uh, but still, if I were a discom and I was neutral between renewables and really procuring on merit order. Energy with the grid. Grid integration is getting a very good priority with the government of India and learning from some other great countries who have already done this, let's say Germany. So a report has been generated and it is available on the website. Mr. Suni, if you know, uh, he has been leading that. So in short, uh, yes, it is a very important issue and is being addressed. And I can, of course, uh, again, uh, you know, dwell 10, 15 minutes on the same subject, but uh, let us go to uh, Mr. Omkar Kapoor. Uh, in fact, uh, Refreshingly, he's from the wind side. So, CTEC, I am uh, very happy. Then, we are, when we are talking of uh, so much of solar, and uh, now that we'll talk of wind, uh, you'll co cover both. Uh, you, you'll cover renewables. Yeah, okay, very good. So, uh, but wind, uh, as we all know, that the recent uh, tender that was there. I'll just, uh, you know, one small incident, uh, you know, Suzlon is a big player. Their CEO, we were uh, just traveling, boarded uh, one flight together, and I just told him that, shall I joke? He said, uh, yes, yes, please, he knows me well. Huh? So I said, Aap line mein aage na, huh? you know, sab log abhi 2.64 pe aage. that means solar pay wind log aage, which is uh, very happy for the country. Uh, so that is very important and as uh, because he said he is going to speak of Ari, let me add this also just about three years ago when that depreciation was removed from wind and there was a talk of restoring it one year later some journalists uh, mischievous people asking me that what is your reaction expecting that I will say that, no no it should not be given to wind I said no no uh, wind is also contributing as much as the solar is doing in a similar way so we should see both solar and wind as uh, you know playing the same re game uh, for the benefit of uh, the planet and the country so with those words uh, let us hear mr omkar kapu so uh, thank you mr mehta for introducing and uh, uh, it is good that uh, i learned how to be on this side of the conference when you are starting the conference you can speak shortly and say my the other members will tell you in detail i will not take the time and when you are in the last you can say all people have learned people have already told what is happening in the sector so i mean but of course i will tell see we have to see renewable in the larger sphere also how if in 
human population india is number 2 so in all aspects of any index we should be number 2 so if like car manufacturing is there is we number 2 no today but it is good now in renewable wind and solar we are number 2 number 3 Number four. Now, shortly, we will touch. So, it is good. Mr. Veta already shared that uh, it is the good as a as a Indian. We have taken this uh, as a challenge to protect the environment. Next thing is that when today everybody is getting information that China is touching fifty thousand megawatt by the December because they have a calendar year year. Uh, data so if china is touching 50000 and our economy is 1/5 of that so our target is 10000 if we are taking equivalent effort on doing the business but still we are not able to test the 10000 there are so many issues everybody understand second thing at this moment of time due to the other economic issues we are it's just part of the power i am not going the ca data surplus power something so who need the power and at what price discom is just uh, taking back if they have signed some ppa even at 4 rupees 5 rupees solar or wind they are not uh, uh, honoring it and they are uh, forcing to renegotiate all those thing happening same time when we are saying in india the tariff of wind and solar is 2.64 recent saudi arabia bid was 1.8 cent and equivalent is 1.2 rupees how maybe what uh, tan is saying the radiation but it means still after solar radiation we are inefficient so what is in our inefficiency we have to see it when some part of the world can give so we can make what is the equivalent of solar radiation in saudi and india but it cannot go more than 2 rupees and if we are still at 2.5 yes 25% inefficiency is there either in the uh, our uh, financing or our engineering we have to see it it is not so next thing what i am saying this renewable sector when we are saying we are developing wind farm and solar farm it is really like agriculture business why i am saying like farmers producing the tomato onion so sometime you finding that tomato costing 60 rupees sometime you finding 2 rupees so our power is also like that when wind is blowing power is there when solar is there your power is there but what what happened in last 3 and 400 years in industrialization we somehow overcome the uh, what you say the variation of the weather conditioning either the month wise or day wise so my any customer is asking you to give me power constant 24 hours say 5 megawatt is wind is able to give is solar is able to give 24 hours 365 days no so it means if he is buying from me he has to make some other arrangement why i am saying like a tomato if tomato in some particular part of maharashtra is growing one season but i need tomato every day in my kitchen so i have to be depend upon other source also so that is the cost so uh, we have to think yes we are industry but our type of business our variation of the customer prices availability or like a agriculture sector <coughs> unless otherwise like what is the issue in agriculture storage we know that 30 to 40% of the agriculture product was wasted similarly is our all we will find technology will find the solution of storage we are little far away to beat the tariff because if some process industry is there they cannot increase or decrease the load every uh, shift or every day the furnace are there they have to maintain for throughout the year that temperature so these are the issue similarly due to our social political factors discoms have to uh, rebalance 
uh, money from the industry to the uh, poor. But I am uh, saying to the government always that why it is only the power sector. When you want to give subsidy to the farmer, you are not charging me on wheat or rice. It is from the global budget you are subsidizing them. So similarly, power has to be subsidized from the global budget, not from the industry. Because one way we are saying make in India, then what is the input cost to the factories? It is very, very high in compared to India. So our major targets of making India is also suffering due to loading to the factories. Now, what is saying that renewable power, wind and solar, when I'm going for B2B, there are so many hurdles, technically as well as the commercial. Like in across the country, DISCOM is not allowing you net metering more than one megawatt. And there are uh, when you want to go for off uh, so offline to the any industry, they have uh, too much charges, cross subsidy charges. When they are not satisfied with the cross subsidy, they have come out with the additional charges. So finally, it is not making any sense. Second thing, when you are making B two B PPA for twenty five year, if you are committing to someone, you don't know what is your the cost of the transmission and wheeling. Because no, uh, there is no uh, long-term policy for transmission billing. It is a very short-term, two to three years. This is the biggest challenge, uh, B2B. And uh, due to the, again, I'm saying so socio-political issue, how uh, it, we can overcome. Because it is not in India, you will find across the globe, uh, these discoms, they have big brother philosophy, and uh, they are behaving in this way. Uh, next thing, what Anna is covered, like, uh, uh, what I, uh, I observed in the solar panel especially, uh, when you get the data sheet of solar panel, you are saying one is the STC condition and one is NOCT condition. So NOCT is at 45. Two days back, just I checked with one of my solar farm, uh, what is uh, at how many hours you run more than 45. So it is 75% of, of the time in a year, it run over 45 degree. And there we have issues. So I just suggest our technical expert also, this should suggest to MNRE. So each panel has to give, we want some Indian standard, it should be tested around 65. So we should know at 65 what will be your degradation and how to calculate what is the radiation and generation. Because I am finding after 45 it is a too much degradation due to the uh, temperature performance. <laughs> Similarly, what we have the data of solar and wind, if you discuss across the uh, sector, everybody will say this year wind is blowing low, solar radiation is coming low. So this is also a challenge. Why I am saying, my the EDF counter partner, they are saying in Europe, the loan is available for 25 years. And why the banks in India are saying, 12 years, 15 years, 18 years, because our wind assessment data, our performance data is not standardized. What we say, what we deliver. Due to that, banks is also taking the tail end with them to cover all these issues. So one thing we have to see, the generation data on wind and solar, same. Next thing I'm saying now, my vision is that in next one or two years, the renewable bid will come technology neutral, either wind and solar, because both are at par now. Why? Customers say, uh, I need power, I need the green power basically. So it, now solar has to not compete with the solar, it has to compete with wind, and wind has to compete with solar. And uh, like uh, now we have the high wind mass and the things, at today we have the wind at 120 meters, 100 foot, now we are planning to, all, all industries planning more than 150 meter. So again, the wind assessment will go up. Similarly in solar, this uh, uh, better technology panel is coming. And I suggest, uh, Mr. Mehta, you just suggest to the government also, uh, they have to make a high technology panel introduction. Like in China, they have a three phase. One is the run of the mill panel plant, then is the advanced technology and the super advanced technology. So each, they have the target and different tariff also to support the R&D, all those things. So 
that is my view thank you